Hello, welcome to this video on modelling the Bristol Brabazon. Today we're going to be working on the fuselage. The first thing you want to do is import your three view image and then drag the reference slider to each point of the wing. Now you have to start with the dots because that then becomes the origin and then move the arrow to the other side. You then put in your desired wingspan. So for this, I'm doing a 1500 millimeter wingspan. And once you've done one plane, you then just follow up with a sketch on each plane. And all you do is import the image and do the same again. Use the same point of the wing, same reference. And then what you want to do is on each one, line up the origin with the nose, the very point of the nose, so that on each view, the points of the nose line up. So here you can see I'm just rotating this image slightly to match the correct orientation. But then both these images, the, point, the same point on the nose lines up, as you'll see once you look at it in 3D. And then again on the last plane, so then you have a view from each angle. Now I'm just putting the images into a folder just to make it easier to keep track of and I'm just going to rename each sketch to the top side or front view. This just makes it easier when we try and hide and show them later on we don't have to remember which one's which, we can just go and look. So now I'm just going to start on one of the planes and I'm going to use the spline tool to outline the fuselage. Really, you want to use the spline tool rather than the align tool because once you've drawn this, you can then come back and manually tweak the uh, arrows to change the different curvature levels. So, here I'm just changing it so it looks and follows the curve a lot nicer. And this is something that you won't be able to do if you use the line tool. Note what I'm going to do is I'm going to now draw a line that follows the bulbous part of the fuselage. So because the very after the aircraft tapers up, this line just goes straight from the nose and at the very end tapers up to follow the line of the aircraft. So once I've done that side view, I'm now going to go onto the top view plane and I'm going to draw a sketch here, again using the spline tool and starting from the origin. And all I'm going to do is trace out the outline of the fuselage. For this, we can do it uh, just half of the sketch and then mirror it about the other plane. This means that when we change one side, it changes the other side and we end up with the fuselage, which is symmetrical. And again, you can see me here tweaking the arrows to try and make that line up a lot better. Here we can see that because they because the end tapers up, the sketches do not line up. And this will cause problems when we try and loft the surface. So what we need to do is have a 3D sketch that follows the outside contour but tapers up at the end. So what you want to do is press tab and what you'll be able to see is that when we choose the spline tool, there is an XY down the side. And if we press tab, it changes the plane that it's drawing on. And so what you want to do is have it on the top down plane. You want to draw so that it follows on that plane. And all I'm going to do is click on each of the dots from the reference sketch that we have. But then when it comes towards the rear section, once it gets to the part where it tapers up, I'm going to stop clicking on the dots so that it does not automatically reference a uh, coincident to them. And then at the very back, I'm going to finish it by hovering over the sketch and this will turn the sketch three-dimensional. What I'm going to do here is hold control, click on the two points and then align them along the vertical axes and then this relation will allow the 
three-dimensional sketch to move up and down but not left and right. So you can see here it can go up and down but as we drag it up and down it will only go in that direction. And here I'm just adding another reference point. So make sure to click the dot not the line. And then again here if the sketch where it follows the taper had more points or the same amount of points we could have coincidented those as well but as it stands i'm just going to look at the side view and manually drag it so it matches this will try and add a relation but that's fine just okay out of that error and here we can have a sketch here we can see there's a 3d sketch that follows the line of the aircraft both along the flat plane and the top plane So once we hide the other reference sketches, you'll see it much more resembles the very outside sections of an aircraft. And don't forget to mirror it either. So here those planes are hidden and you can see much more that this looks more like an aircraft. And don't forget to save your work. And what I'm about to do is draw lots of planes, reference planes, to basically you want to have a cross-sectional area, a cross-sectional sketch of each section of the aircraft. So if you can get a three view with sectional cross-sectional diagrams, you could use those sketches as reference. But here, because the Brabazon is quite a simple fuselage and it's basically a tube, we don't need to do that. We can just use the spline tool and draw mm -hmm. a circle. So the more detailed your fuselage is, so the more changes in geometry, the more reference planes you would want and especially where the geometry is difficult you'd want more planes closer together but for this i'm just going to do the minimum i can get away with because as you'll see it takes a while the more planes you have the more detailed but the more time it takes to draw so you see it typically i have a few at the very beginning where it's detailed along the main tube section there's not very many because nothing really changes and we use the other lines as a guide anyway. So now we're drawing across sections and we just get a spline. We make sure we do four dots anywhere, make sure they line back up and then each dot hold control and then select the either vertical or horizontal line and use the Pierce relation, not the coincident relation. And you'll see that on the three dimensional sketch, it will then match up a cross section this is now fully defined and it's now on that plane and it matches those reference sketches. And then it's just a case of doing that for all of the planes that you have. So this is why if you have lots of planes, it takes a very long time. This is the time 16 speed. And this is where you'd want to use your cross-sectional reference sketches if you had them. So this is where you can include things like bulges for wings or for uh, intake ducts. You can add these in here. And now you can see that when we hide all these planes, this is starting to look much more like an aircraft with the ribs and the spars. And what we want to do is come onto a lofted surface and then in order, select the sketches that are on each plane. This must be done in order or you'll get a error because it's basically trying to overlap itself. So just make sure you click them all one by one in order and click all of them. And once you have that gone to guide curves and you want to click the three dimensional sketch and also the vertical sketch. And then once we click OK, you can see that now we have a surface body that on its own doesn't look like much but once we bring in a few images of the Brabazon 
it's you can see it matches the fuselage very closely. And if it wasn't quite right, you can go back into those guide sketches and change those and that would alter the whole thing and it's much more easy time to see how that change takes effect by doing it once you can see the full image and the surface. In the next video I'm going to draw the wings and I'm going to include those and talk a little bit about ailerons.